Morning. Hi, everybody. It's Paul Wontorek. Matt Roden. We are here at Broadway.com. It's 5 o'clock on uh, Summer Friday, which is actually Thursday, but we don't do this on Fridays. <laughs> right, it's Thursday. Last day Calm of the down. week. It's Thursday. Yes. Um, hi, how, how's your day? How are you my doing? Day, my day was great. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I'm happy it's Thursday. I'm like ready for the weekend. I'm happy that uh, Mr. Tom Hewitt is here. Woohoo! Mr. Tom Hewitt, who is uh, back razzling, dazzling. You know the girls with the feathers and doing all that stuff in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's Billy Flynn. Yes. Uh, but but we have some news. We have some news to talk about. Big news. Big news. Big news. What show is that? Parade. Real big news. I don't know. Real big anyway, news. I just had a song come in my head. But I don't know what show it's from. Real big news. What is that from? Real big news. Is it from Parade? I think it's from Parade. I'm gonna say. Do you it's know Parade. Tom? Tom? I think it's Parade. No. Uh, anyway, Me Mean Girls is a musical. Is a musical now? It's not a musical yet. It feels like it's already been running for three years. Because uh, we've been talking about it for so long. <laughs> so that's all anyone's talking about. Uh, mean Girls is a hopefully Broadway-bound musical. We don't know yet. But so we've heard. It. Obviously, so we've Tina Fey heard. has been working on it with her husband, Jeff Brisbane, for a few years now. Yes. Uh, she, of course, wrote the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And finally, we got some casting news today. Because every actress in New York City and some actors was have, in for this show have been auditioning for this show, <laughs> and we've all been wondering who will get to uh, play these iconic roles, especially iconic for people under the age of thirty. Yeah, I mean, I saw the movie, but I don't know these roles. Like, like what? I mean, I, I yeah, this I was mean, a big movie for like. I know my, that when my, you're writing about Mean Girls, yeah. or talking about it on Broadway.com, you just have to use the word fetch. I know that. That whatever, no matter what, we have to use the but word. But I fetch. need to see the movie again, and I might watch it this weekend because okay. I did love it when I saw it. Um, so congratulations to uh, Erica Henningsen, who we saw as Fontaine in Les Mis on Broadway. She was also in Diner in yes, D.C. out of town yeah. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, she will be playing Katie Heron. Is it Heron? Heron. That's the, yep. uh, I call it um, Lindsay Lohan is what I call it. Yeah, she's but playing Lindsay Katie. Lohan. Uh, she's the innocent girl in Mean Girls, and then yes. there's the mean, the mean Girls, right? The Plastics. Uh, so Taylor Louderman. Love. Who's currently in Kinky Boots. Who we love. feel good about this. Yes. Uh, she's playing Regina, which is like the, the top bitch. Yes. Correct? Yep, the main, okay. the main gal. Okay, Ashley Park. Who we love uh, is Gretchen Wiener, Kate Rockwell, also Karen love her. Smith, yeah. Barrett Wilbert Weed, who was also in Heather's, gets confusing. Love it. Uh, it's Janice. You know, it is kind of confusing. It is because also there's people. And also, there's legally blonde. Also, and the clueless reading is happening right now. And then clueless. So like all these like sort of like teenage girl click group yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, Gray Henson, who is in Book of Mormon. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Damien Carrie Butler? This is funny. Carrie Butler is playing Miss Norbury, who is. That's the role that Tina Fey played in the movie. Oh, really? That's, that's what I was. Oh, talking. I was. Oh, I. Oh, I guess that's. But not what the, I know not about the, not the Amy Poehler role. I don't know. This is what I was told. I hope I'm right. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're right. Uh, so anyway, but what's funny about that is I knew that Tina Fey was obsessed with Carrie Butler. Really? Yeah, because I went to a Carrie Butler CD signing like five years ago at Barnes and Noble, yeah. and I was like, "Why is Tina Fey over there with she like loves with Carrie like Butler. her kid with like dark shades?" I was like. Tina Fey's like a big, and I was like, oh, she's a big Carrie Butler fan, and there's the proof. Booked! She had to have her in her musical. Booked and blessed. Uh, Kyle Selig is Aaron Samuels. Cheech Manahar, great name, is playing Kevin, and Rick Younger is Mr. Duvall. So anyway, all of this magic will be happening at DC's National Theater on starting on Halloween, October 30th through December 3rd. That's a hot ticket hot for tickets. Washington, D.C. Hot ticket. And Casey Nicola, who knows a thing about making hit shows. Comedies. Is the man behind yes. this. Comedies and dramas. All dramas. Didn't you cry yeah. at, at Tuck Everlasting? <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, anyway, I did. And then everyone's <laughs> dying to know if it's going to be on Broadway after that. So um, My if it's good, and hopefully it's going to be good because it's all yes. we can talk about. Yes. But there's other things to talk about, too. What else? Um, Speaking of Chicago, Mr. Yes. Tom Hewitt, Brandy's coming back. My girl Brandy's Ooh, back. Brandy. Um, she is going to be doing 17 performances only as Roxy. Now, did this happen because she heard about Mandy Patinkin? And she was like, and I got to like, get in I on gotta that. I got to get one of those runs. Is that your <laughs> yes. Brandy impression? You might be careful. Might yeah, be careful I know. That. I, but she was, I'm sure she like just wants to come back. and like I, you know. Well, I heard that she's like a fantastic Roxy. I didn't see her the Okay, well, time. she's done it everywhere. So she did a four-month run on Broadway, yeah, which was extended. Road, right? She did it on the road. She was in LA. She did it in DC. Like She has done it forever yeah. and everywhere. Yeah. August 17th through the 31st. Cool. That's when you can see Brandy on Broadway. 17 performances as Roxy Hart. Awesome. Um, so this, this play sounds crazy and okay. kind of fun. It's called The Portuguese Kid, which reminds me of, some, uh, anyway, The Flamingo Kid, not The Flamingo Kid. It's The Portuguese Kid. Deep I'll, cuts. I'll stop with the Deep cuts references. with these Although, Flamingo Kid. I appreciate them. 
I'm here to appreciate my references. <laughs> um, Sharon A. Scott and Mary Testa are joining Jason Alexander. This is like a kind of a crazy cast. It's a little, and it's, it's a John squad. Patrick Shanley's new play. Yeah. I have to read the description, which you so graciously I, gave me the I gave you the little synopsis in here. Um, so this is happening at MTC City Center. It starts September 19th. But I just have to read the plot because it's kind of crazy. Set in Providence, Rhode Island, which is a nice little town, the Portuguese kid focuses on the habitually widowed Atalanta, that's Sharon A. Scott's character, who plays a visit to her second-rate lawyer, Barry Dragonetti, Jason Alexander, intending to settle her late husband's affairs. The larger-than-life Greek tightwad quickly becomes a nightmare for her cheesy, self-aggrandizing attorney. Add Barry's and possibly Croatian mother, Mary Testa. Testa. I mean, Mary Testa as a Croatian Perfect. mother. Um, a dash of current politics, maybe some that were being tweeted about today, and a couple of opportunistic young lovers, and you have... A recipe for a comic combustion. Tell Sounds Patrick like Shanley hasn't I'm written in. like a crazy, wacky what comedy. Was that? Do in a we while. know the last thing that he did that was on Broadway? It was a play. Well, well <laughs> Broadway was doubt. That Sorry, was Patrick Shanley. Are we all good? Is it? Are we still on? We're on. <laughs> it's Thursday, people. Doubt it's was been on a Broadway long week. And Tony, but he's done a lot of plays for MTC. So yes. this, this is his newest. So I'm excited. It sounds nuts. Um, Sherry, how you doing? Opens October 24. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, so a bunch of new videos on the website to like watch. Um, well, Paul, like this one. I'll tell you, this one is one of them. Uh, Michael Moore was on the Colbert, not Colbert Report. He was on Late Night with Stephen Colbert. I know. See, I'm just still. I just love Stephen Wasn't Colbert. Was that what Sutton Foster was on too? Yes. Oh. Yes. But Michael Moore was on talking about terms of my surrender, which opens not uh, opens tonight. Begins Starts. performances tonight. Yeah. So they start previews tonight, which is very exciting. And then is he going to take down the presidency? Is that the that's I, the goal of the Broadway show? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, the other one that we need to that you have to watch is Waitress did the ham for all challenge finally. Oh, they I haven't did watched the, that. Yeah, it's very very cute. Um, they did a uh, parody of Wait for it called Bake for it, bake for it, bake for it, bake for it. And didn't we also put up um, Sugar Butter Betsy? Yes, yeah, Sugar Butter Betsy's up too. That's true. Which is a new so vlog. So more waitress, more waitress things. People have been begging us for a waitress vlog since it started. Really? Have so we never? Merry we haven't, Christmas, we haven't, everyone. <laughs> Here's your waitress vlog. We haven't done one yet. We had. This not is the done first one. one. No. Sugar butter Betsy. Sugar I love butter it. Sugar butter Betsy. Um, so yeah, so they were challenged by Groundhog Day. Oh. And okay. so they yeah, did it, and then they challenged, challenged Sarah Bareilles and Brendan Urie and Kinky Boots. So let's keep our eyes peeled. Okay. For that. And let's nobody challenge Broadway.com. Um, so The Secret Life of Bees is a musical. We've been talking about this. Yeah. It's happening up at Vassar Powerhouse, and it starts tonight. So, uh, uh, Udo Aduba. Uzo, Uzo Aduba. Aduba. Uzo, sorry. Um, she's a Kitty Atea Nata one. She's in it. And yeah. she, uh, okay. I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. We've been, Kitty Atea We have been doing pronunciations hard um, this week. Anyway, it in. starts tonight at Powerhouse. Yes. And it's running, it's, a, it's like a workshop. It's running through yeah. the weekend, but it's obviously. Powerhouse team, though. Oh my God, Lynn, well, it's Powerhouse Theater, so hey. Powerhouse Theater, Powerhouse Team. Lynn Nottage, Duncan Sheik, and Susan Birkenhead. Those are all very talented people, and they write Broadway shows, so maybe they wrote one. Maybe this will be the next thing. Secret Life of Bees. It was maybe a Maybe it'll be Mean Girls versus Bees at the Tonys next year. Wow. Already throwing out Tony predictions. It hasn't even been like a month and a half. Why two not? months. Why not? We're already talking about it. Um, okay, that's all, that's all we that's have. It. That's, that's all it. That's all we got. We'll be back with the charming Mr. Tom Hewitt. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed oh, the away the mask of makeup. Just to talk, not to spur, man to man, queen to queen on a par, standing face to face. Hi. We're back live at five or live at five ten. Uh, Mr. Tom Hewitt <laughs> has joined me. Uh, he, back in back in Chicago, back in the tux, back in the tux, back in the tux, in the middle of the fans at Chicago. Yeah. Um, so uh, 
How, oh my God! How, you've, you've done this. Let's be very clear about this. This Let's has be been a clear. place that you've stopped by the Ambassador Theater once or twice. M like how many times? My first stint was at the beginning of the first Obama administration. Oh, yeah. So that was like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, two thousand eight. Okay. I remember I had like oh, really? his picture okay. from the Times okay. on my wow. On my okay. Door. Yeah, yeah. Nine years. Nine nine years. Right. Off and on. You know, like I would do like a few months and then go away for a long time, come back. It's like how you but do like, there. But like, what's the age breakdown on Billy Flynn? I feel like you could be any age to be Billy you can Flynn. Be <laughs> right? I mean, until, does, yes. You could do it for the rest of your life if you want. I, but perhaps. And you, you know, should still because you're super great at it. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah. It's really fun. It's a really fun job. And like and you know and of course Brandy is coming in, which Brandy's I just found coming. out about today yeah. via. Are you a big uh, The Boy Is Mine fan? The Boy Is Mine I am now. <laughs> I'm really excited. You know, she, every, I heard she's I all, fantastic. I've never seen her. Everybody yeah. says she's yeah. really, really good. I know. I heard she's really surprising and like, you know, it's like, wow, it's not just like stunt casting on any level. It's exactly. Like she's amazing. Yeah, she shows up. So here's the deal with that show. It's one of the funnest that jobs show. I've ever had. That Equals show, Chicago. it's like an ensemble of people. There is a, a vast pool of people from right. which they can draw. So you never know from night to night, will it be Charlotte D'Amboise? Will it be, you know, who, who's gonna show up tonight to right. be Roxy? And right. it's so much fun. Not only that, but the ensemble themselves, like the core company, they all, there's, you know, um, Jason Patrick Sands does yes. a killer Billy Flynn and an Amos, like a cellophane man. I, oh, he it's does Amos? Yes, and I'm like, yeah, really? Amos. You're much too attractive, but no. he. It's really, really interesting. Okay. So that show is so smart. You know, the producers are so smart. Yeah. It's so Barry malleable to Barry and Fran. Weiss, uh, yes. Are so smart to keep it. It's very malleable, and, and, and so many different kinds of personalities can fit in there, and the material is so good, and it's so actor proof, and it's a joy yeah. to be in that dance. So, do show. all of you, do you and all the Billy Flynn's like hang out and play poker? <laughs> no. Or strip poker or something? Is there anything happening with all the Billy Flynn's? Do you guys do something together? No, we should, though. That's a great yeah, idea. Here's a, here's a fun. We can do it live on Broadway.com Facebook. Here's a fun fact. Who's the original? God, why, why am I blanking on his Who's name? Who's the original? James Naughton. G G G Jimmy Naughton. Oh, Jimmy Naughton. James Naughton and I both do the voiceover, the uh, fair and balanced for an erectile dysfunction, competing erectile strip dysfunction medicine. Poker. Yes. <laughs> We are the to the Billy. We are the Billy Flynn's, and we talk about the. I love that male. What problems. is your erectile dysfunction start, voice? Ask your doctor what if your the, heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take if you have. Seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. You gotta look out. You gotta if it's look, still going. You gotta, you get gotta some give help. somebody a call. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever sit around and go, "Oh my God, I played Frank and on Broadway." <laughs> I mean, that's, and, and by the way, Tony nomination, very well deserved. Thanks for And that was an amazing in. production, oh everybody. If you you know, I know most of these children didn't see it, they were too young. It was but a Jordan, long time, like should 70. bring it back. Jo Jordan right. Ross, let's just do it again. So somebody sent let's me. Let's do the time warp again. Let's do the time warp again, again, Jordan. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but isn't somebody, that crazy? It's really crazy. And I actually crazy. was just looking up photos of you in it. And I saw your butt, and I saw the whole thing. Like the, you, it was just hanging out, and all of it, talking, and right. There was all kinds of things happening. You know, people yelled and yelled and threw stuff at us. It was part of the. Oh, I know. Part it's, of the it's, whole it was so much thing. Fun. It was the Somebody sent me a video, shows. like a, a bootleg videotape of it, and I watched it with glee. You know, enough. Did you watch the whole show? Yes. It had been a long time, and uh, so I watched without that. You know, enough time. My cells have completely regenerated since <laughs> I'm a completely different person. So I can sit back and, and not be judgmental about me, and I'm like the audacity of me. It's really fun to to walk to like what was I thinking? It was just so that whole experience was. You were amazing. Is that circle in the square. Circle yeah. in the square. And that whole cast. Oh, come on, millennial, look it up. Just IBDB. Don't talk to us oh, about it. <laughs> um, but the. Uh, I love you, Matt Rodden. Um, but that whole cast, oh my God. I mean, the whole, that cast was crazy. Well, let's start with Joan Jett, for God's sake. Sure, then, let's start with Joan Jett. Then, I would start with Daphne Mavega or Al Swift. Well, we could, but then we got to segue to Dick Cavett as, oh my the, God, you're right. as yeah. the narrator. Yeah. So we start there, and then we build it up with Leah Delaria as Eddie. Yeah, I know. Slash Dr. Scott. Yeah. Sebastian Lacaz hitting it out of the free, gorgeous, and singing like an angel. Well, when Sebastian Lacaz, I mean, we're just going to talk about Rocky Horror, but when Sebastian Lacaz, <laughs> got yeah. cast in that it was like remember it was like oh the the star of broadway bears over the last six years is finally just going to be completely naked the entire show yes that's yeah. how it was and yeah exactly it was and, good and doing that's more than just being pretty he he was fantastic the whole time anyway, that's raul sparza hello i've ever heard of him uh, anyway and no one had I mean, been just, oh my god i want a reunion concert 
Anyway. Oh, wouldn't it be fun? It would be fun. Yeah. Would you do it if there's a reunion concert? Yeah. Would you do it in costume? I'm, I, I'm wearing a little something right now. You look good. <laughs> you can pull it off. You can pull it off. <laughs> I can feel pretty down there. But you have off. actually been in a crap load of Broadway shows. A crap How load. many? I have I, been in. I ele- counted. Ele- 11? Yeah, Thank 11. you. Are we at the same count? Yeah. So I'm not lying. Yeah, yeah, 11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm counting like the one I standbys too. Like I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. Okay. Good. Actually, yeah. What was the first one you were standby? Well, I only done it once, and that was for art. I stood oh, art. by for okay. Victor Garber and went right. a couple of times. Yeah, you work so. with fancy people. Fancy people. Did you do something with Sister Rosen Swag? That was too? my Broadway debut. Okay, and who was in that one? You <laughs> did it? Well, Michael Learned and. Um, uh, Hal Linden and oh. Linda freaking Lavin, who was Linda fantastic, Lavin. and then uh, the yet we hadn't heard of uh, Brian F. O'Byrne oh, yeah. and Amy Ryan yeah. and Sarah Paulson was an offstage cover in that show. I know yeah. Sarah Paulson. Sarah freaking Paulson. She blew up. Hi Sarah. Hi Sarah. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> going well. Um, what? So what other? Uh, what are like some of your favorite roles? Because you've done you've done a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's, well, yeah, well, mm, well uh, it's, <laughs> you know. I just want the voice of that answer, about all those, bo- the, all that audio. I know, there's a lot, I gotta, I gotta edit what I say. <laughs> you know, uh, Pontius Pilate was oddly, like, I never, here's Fantastic. the thing, yeah, like, it's always the things that I, a career is not anything that you can, pl- I heard somebody smart say this once, a career isn't something you plan for, right. it's something that you look back on. Uh-huh. And so I would like, right. okay, so I'm gonna, when I grow up, I'm gonna play an alien transvestite in Rocky Horror, so like that's right. not good. I'm gonna play an evil lion, like that. Oh, like, Scar, yeah, that was good. Right, but um, early, very, very early on when I first let, early in uh, my training, I worked with a Japanese avant-garde theater company throughout mm. the 80s and the 90s. Okay. And so as far as experiences go, that was really kind of the most profound and important for me. It was, uh, I, I spoke English, the, the company spoke Japanese. I, it was just the, the craziest thing, it was really physically difficult and, and, uh-huh. and, and challenging. What kind of and, stuff did you do with them? Like, um, Jap- avant-garde interpretations of Western classics, oh. like the ta- like King Lear, a compilation, he called it the Tale oh. of Lear, a compilation of Lear, as I was 32, I put, was playing Lear. And a thing called Clytemnestra, which was sort of a compilation of the Oresteia and the Eumenides, these Greek tragedies, wow. in the context of his physical training. And we played international theater festivals all over the place. And it was a really important, wonderful adventure for me as a young actor. And it absolutely shaped my life after that. Hmm. If he, he, this director, Tadashi Suzuki, would talk often about um, being fictitious on the stage. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And how do you manifest that? And, and it always really, really sparked my imagination. And I uh, have loved and have sought out roles that are sort of bigger than, you know, like other than human in a way. Uh-huh. Like, okay. like, you yeah. know, yeah. being something you else. You want to play the guy next door. I'm not particularly good at the. Uh huh. Naturalism is, I shouldn't be saying this, I'm, <laughs> you know, typing myself out of all kinds of auditions, but naturalism has never really been my strong. So point. what's the trick to Billy Flynn? I mean, do you ever show up at the theater and not feel sexy and suave and all that, and you just have to, like, get out there and do it? <laughs> like, that ever happen? Every freaking day. <laughs> every day. You just describe my life, Paul. <laughs> uh, is, uh, he, uh, no, yes, <laughs> I do, I do. But you know, here's the thing. You know, it's the, one of those roles where you stand in the middle and the t- really talented people like dance around you. Yeah. So you know, and you just show up and do the material, basically. So um, that's, you're a fantastic singer. Well, which thank is, you. Which is an important part of it. I mean. Well, Mm, thanks. I wouldn't really categorize myself. Really? No, I was always an actor who sang. Kind well, you of. started doing plays, right? More yeah. than musicals. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the thought of being in a Broadway musical is not so in the game plan at all. I'm sing? still surprised that I'm cast in musicals. Yeah. Remember when and you were at Dracula? I remember when I was in Dracula. Remember that? <laughs> that's the the first big one when I had to kind of step up my my game. Like I remember, you know, Frank. Remember the part where did you like float by? That wasn't you. That's probably a double. It was no. It was always it was you. Yeah. That was me, like you floated by. We like, called it mid, the like, gratuitous up, vertical right? flo- flyby. We yeah, just, you did a little like, just a little like weird flyby. flying sideways. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was weird. Can. God, that show was so much damn fun to do. Oh my like, god, it was crazy. It was so. I don't. How about leading ladies for that one, right? How about that? Because somebody asked about favorite leading ladies, but that one you had Kelly O'Hara and Melissa Eric. Sarah Cope, both of them. Kelly Crazy. Hara, right. n- naked. Naked, right? Oh my God, that's naked right. Kelly O'Hara. Yeah, she got attention. That's how she. That's how she. That's how she made her mark. Boy, I'm Kelly good. O'Hara. And was then very, we found was, out she was fantastically talented. <laughs> 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 it was discreet and tasteful. You know, it, it was. There was not. It was. Not exploitive. Of course at all. it was. Let's not start stories. But, but uh, any other favorite leading ladies? Y- Melissa. Um, 
Oh gosh, oh, there's been so. Who are you friends many. with? Like, who do you keep in touch with? Like, who are you like? It means a lot of like relationships. Yeah. Oh, that's you a could totally do one of those like feelings. seven degrees of Tom Hewitt. I could. Games. You could do that. Six I, or six. Six or seven. I could. You know, I loved. I did the national tour of uh, Dirty Rotten Rat Scoundrels, and I just loved Laura Marie Duncan. She she was oh. she was just fantastic in that. She was uh, great. Yeah. I, no, I'm bad. I'm sort of bad with the keeping up with the people. And so, yeah, and yeah. I'm an isolating loner. And, well, I mean, there's like the, there's your stage life, and then there's your real life. Absolutely. So, what do you literally love to do, like in your real life, outside of Broadway? Oh, I like, do nothing better than anyone I know. I'm really, really good at doing absolutely nothing. Which, which means what? You just sit on your back? Well, no. You know, I do. I audition for some voiceovers at home. I like. Or you know, I love to read. So, <laughs> exactly. And others. Um, we, my partner and I, have a beautiful little house in Putnam County. Uh -huh. So now there's you know yard work and, and yeah. a pride in home ownership. Yeah, that's a lot. That. So it is actually quite quite a bit yeah. for me now, and it's it's fun. It's like yeah. those are fun things to do yeah. in my dotage. Um, uh, oh, Emily saw Dracula. Do you have a favorite um, onstage mishap? It doesn't have to just be Chicago. Is there, is there anything that ever happened where you were just like, oh my God, how do we get through that? I was in a bus and truck of Gigi with Louis Jordan. Louis Jordan played the Maurice he, Chevalier He was role. in the movie. He was in the, he play, and I played the role he played in the movie. Right, okay. And <clears throat> then we're in Boston, we're just opening the show and it was uh, not a particularly, the infrastructure of the show is not strong. <laughs> Let's say it was a bus and truck. So <laughs> it was really early on and we had this uh, <laughs> golf cart motored three-wheeled car that I would drive on and Louis Jordan and I would sing the duet, It's a Boar. You know, mm -hmm. like, what color are the trees? Green. What color were the last three? Green. Right. It's a boar. So, and then, and, um, so I would get off the car, Louis Jordan would then j get on the car <laughs> and drive with one of his little, you know, I don't, courtesan French girls and drive off the stage. Okay. And, oh no, you know, no, I drove off the, the stage okay. and, and one of the wheels bent and it was impossible to steer. The car r drove no. into a light tower, which then slowly started to, you could just see it, sh 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 light cables, and then the lights coming and sh sh crash and sparks and glass. And I'm expecting Louis Jordan's severed head to <laughs> roll onto the stage. That Thankfully was some, that didn't happen. It did not happen. Um, <laughs> that was the most spectacular. Uh, <laughs> Stage mishap. That's of my actually career. Like a really good one. I should make it more anecdotal, though. That's I should think that through. Thanks for, for bringing that back. <laughs> Alec wants to know how many Roxy slash Velmas have you performed with? Oh my God! Love you, and Jessica, Superstar, by the way. Oh, BTW. that's very really sweet. One, dun, 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 two, dun, 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 three. That was my yeah. big number. Counting to thirty-nine in yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Jeez, uh, I gotta count because that's not. I'm gonna. I, that's a lot. It's a lot. It, it, it's a, a lot. And there have been repeats too. You know, okay. like Charlotte D'Amboise is back now. She was my first Roxy in. in right. Um, well, that's a good way to start. That's a good question. Though. I need to sit down and tally yeah. that number up. Or not. I mean, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not moved. I got lawns to mow. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a lot of questions. What was it like playing Scar? Brooke wants to know. Oh, Scar, yeah. Well, totally fun. Nothing like a Disney villain. And that was like my first. Your voice is so good for Scar. Like, you can do that. You have a very <laughs> right, like yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Uncle Scott, mouth. you're so weird. You have no idea. So, yeah, that. Uh, it was big. <laughs> it was a really great first musical. I had a lot of responsibility. You know, like it was my first big thing. Right, I'd worked okay. with Julie Taymor years and years ago in a really small film. Um, oh. Yeah, pre, you know, Genius Grant pre before she was like really before Julie, she was Julie, Julie Taymor. Yeah, we did a, a movie version. We were all like sort of puppets in this, um, uh, ver uh, it was about, it was a Edgar Allan Poe short story. Oh, cool. So I knew the job was dangerous when I took it as far as right. puppet discomfort. <laughs> and so uh -huh. it was a lot, the scar was like about 35 pounds of motors and batteries and cables and you control the, the head with this little, two little sliding That's diodes right on your finger oh, uh -huh. and an off and on switch. So your entire universe becomes this finger, like That's is bizarre. it on, is the thing. Like, I never really knew that. Yeah, yeah, so, and people just sort, you, you sort of choreograph so that you, People kind of just assume that it's all weights and gravity, but no, there's a lot of finesse and intricacy. Is Julie Taymor okay with you telling everyone that secret with that finger? I didn't know it was that. Too finger. late now. I don't think I'm going to hurt the box office with, um, <laughs> with the Lion talking. King. But also, just it was really funny. And people, <laughs> it's, they would go crazy. Yeah. They went crazy. I know. It's Lion King. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, Nancy Opal said yay. Nancy Opal. Hi, Nancy Opal. <laughs> uh, what was the first Broadway show you saw? At least wants to know. The first Broadway show I saw was Chicago the Musical, what? the original with Jerry Orbach. Are you kidding? All me? those no, no. And did it, you not realize that until this moment? 
I hadn't, I haven't really been asked really that question. I don't think it's the first time. I'd you saw Jerry Orbach do it? Yes, oh yes, uh, yeah. It was amazing and it was naughty because people were in their underwear. And you know, I was, right. I was in high school. Yeah. And it was really sexy and, and yeah. edgy and dangerous yeah. and so freaking good. I can't believe it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's the first That's nuts. Wow, yeah. look at that. And Nancy Opal was just here, wasn't she? She's, yes, she was. Here. Hey, Nancy, you can come back whenever you want. I missed you. I wasn't you. here. Um, is there a role you'd like to revisit? Bradley wants to know. Is there, I'm sorry? A role you would like to revisit. Yes, yes. Uh, when I was 32 years old, as I told you, I played King Lear. And mm. now I'm looking at it again, like for you real. Want, yeah, yeah, you want to do it before you like to, you know, before it's hard physically. But I'm getting age appropriate for it now. Um, uh, Wendy wants to know, what was your favorite line? This is a fun question, but um, it might be difficult. Favorite line that was ever called out at Rocky Horror? Oh, that's a really, really good question. And I was trying to think of that the other day. Because the production really encouraged this, by the way. I mean, as you're supposed to, I guess. Yeah, I'm so bad about remembering that kind of stuff. And I don't, is it okay to talk blue on yes. this channel? Okay. Uh, hey, Frank, what's that on your forehead? Come, let's away, or something like come, something yeah, like that. Uh, but m the the most astonishing thing was really early, early on in the run, when somebody yelled out, "Hey, Frank, yell my 14 times," and I jumped, I like jumped downstairs and went, "My, my, 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 oh my God, this is fantastic!" Wow. It was so. There were a lot of really, really good ones, and the show ran. For a long time, and people yeah. keep, like tickets, like you, you know, you punch card tickets, and you get the third one. Anyway, we had a lot of repeats and a lot of yeah. like. It, it evolved. The like calling out and yelling things evolved, and there would become you know dueling factions. <laughs> there were people <laughs> that would call out not only to us but back and forth to each other. And so one night it got like so crazy, and there's so many good ones that I kept doing the same thing over and over to let like different people right. yell the same thing out. And so there was, was it sort of to be to have to be in something where you were on your toes like that? Was that terrifying, or is that just a lot of fun? On your toes, like like Rocky Horror, because it was like that every night. It was different, and you were reacting yeah. to things. Yeah, it was a little bit dangerous, but you know, it only worked if I said the next thing. Like it didn't ver veering from the script and doing right. like improvs outside of the context of the show. Didn't particularly work very right. well. So it's always, oh, you always kind of had to stay. It was a little bit like hosting a party, though, you know, you had to watch Yes, you were absolutely watch the out party for the host. guests. Uh, um, uh, shout out from, from your niece and great nieces in Washington. Oh my God. Tom. That's cute. Uh, oh anyway, you have a lot of, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of questions. How do you keep a long a run fresh, Bradley? Do you like when you come back, is it, do you, do you feel like you're doing the same Billy Flynn you were doing nine years ago? No. Or is it always sort of just dropping the, into mm -hmm. where you are? That, that's that the other point. great thing about a, a show. You know, you leave a, a role and then there's just other things come to you and it's, you get sort of a chance to digest it and, and let it yeah. ferment and then the, 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 the bubbles come to the top. And so, um, yeah, I, it's, I feel really blessed to, to do this. You know, long runs are, are difficult. My trick is I just imagine one couple getting the babysitter, driving the car, parking the car, spending going to the restaurant, money. spending 139 damn dollars a, per a piece ticket, per ticket, plus dinner and parking, plus dinner and parking, and the, and the toll. The toll is expensive. And the toll, and the all, and just the, you know, just getting here. Uh, yeah. It's, re it, I just, just imagine that. And they've never that. seen a Billy Flynn And they've before. never seen, a lot of, it's an event for people. And yeah. I, it's really, it's, that slaps me out of my, uh, yeah. Pity party, and I'm yeah. really happy to do the show. I think it works good every damn time. I think that's good advice for everybody on Broadway. Yeah, and maybe for Nancy Opal. <laughs> I'm sure Nancy turns it out. Kirby Widow. Hey, uh, our, our company's coming to see your show on Wednesday. Not Nancy, <laughs> Nancy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so how long are you going to be there? Do we know? For I'm a scheduled while. now through September 10, which is cool. you know a lot, a long time in Chicago yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. And you get some brandy moments. There. I'm so tickled about the. You whole get to become friends thing. with brandy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for being here, Tom. Boy, what an honor. Sincerely, it's really great to be here. Great to see you, uh, everyone. Go see Tom Hewitt as Billy Flynn at the Ambassador Theater on 49th Street, and we will be back on Monday with another awesome guest. Five o'clock. Bye. Have a good weekend.